Hey guys, Todd from Great Escape Farms here. Today I'm harvesting a couple of rose hips. I don't have that many. I've had, we've had a real weird winter or winter summer this year. Uh, very wet on the East Coast, and I've had a half of my rose bush die off here. You can see one in back; it's kind of dying off. It did have some rose hips on it. Actually, it's kind of self-dried back there. But I do still have a couple in here. You can see down in there. There's another one. Oh. Another one down in there and there's a couple scattered throughout but this is what a rose hip looks like so the front part right here is where the flower was the petals and this is a rosa ragusa variety so you can see there's my thumbnail and it's a fairly decent sized rose hip and running in the background is my dog murphy always got to be in my movies anyhow so inside of this is the seeds to a rose which you actually can stratify which is where you put it in a refrigerator for 45 to 60 days and then grow the seeds to create a new rose bush. But we're not gonna do that. We're interested in the hip part itself, the outer skin and the meat of it, which is, very, according to WebMD online, is very high in vitamin C and uh, other antioxidants and has a number of medicinal uses. So to harvest these, you really wanna wait until after a frost or so so it gets more flavor to it so this is the beginning of September hopefully I'll get this video out be beforehand so everybody that has rose hips they can actually harvest them beforehand but what you're or uh, right after the last frost so what you're looking for is after the last frost they'll get a little bit soft they'll actually get a little bit sweeter and a little bit more flavor to them uh, so this one is very hard and see if I can do this with one hand uh, they actually come off a little easier too when they're uh, when they are have been through a frost. So, and this one, this one actually is a little bit soft. Maybe I should have started with that. I'll go ahead and pull it as well. I'll run this into the garage, and we'll go ahead and cut these open to see what you can see inside. But people dry them. They make uh, tea out of it. You can make jams and jellies and a number of different things. From the fruit in here usually you separate the seeds and you just do that by cutting in half and separating the seeds out I'll show you how to do that here in a little while but uh, very good for you very nutritious another thing I read on uh, WebMD is that the process of drying these and processing them it destroys a lot of the vitamin C so it appears that the best vitamin C and antioxidants is to have them fresh Okay, so I cut these two different ways. This one I cut kind of around the belly, if you will. So this one right here is just full of just meat. There's no seeds in that. You can see on this one there's seeds there. Let me see if I can get these out. So they're, they're rather dry. There's the seeds. And I don't know if you can actually see that, but there's like a little fine hair on the end. And they say that's part of what's unpalatable. You can see it better on this one. You can see like hair on the end there. So they say you kind of want to break these out and get them off and I still got more up in there. And almost looks like there's a lot more of the hair stuff up in here. Let's see if I can dig that out with my nail. And they say that, yeah, you can see it on the end there. So they say that's what's somewhat unpalatable and can actually get some folks sick. So you definitely try to get all that out. Whereas there's not very, very little of the fine hairs on that piece. So then I cut this one cross-sectional here so you can see. This would be the bottom part over here and the top part where the seeds were. And you can just see them in there. So, like I say, not horribly juicy. You'd have to mix some kind of fluid with it or uh, juice with it to make jams or jelly or something out of it. But uh, definitely check out WebMD if you're planning on doing anything medicinal with this. They have a lot of precautions, interactions, and tell you how to use it, dosage, and stuff like that. So uh, that's it for this video. Please, if you have any recipes or anything, go ahead and uh, post those down in the show notes. I, I would appreciate that for myself and the viewers. So thank you very much. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, and have a great day.